Who's up for a game of Dragon Rampant? We're going to be playing with the Undead rules today. We're going to add a little bit of a wrinkle to the summoning. Let's go take a look at the forces first. Our Necromancer comes from Splintered Light. He is in their wizard pack. The rest of our Undead army comes from Alternative Armies. Yes, hi, Rain. We, we, have you met the new parrot yet? Give me a second. I'll, I'll introduce you. She's keeping me company. We've got a total of 23 points for these guys. Our summoner is with an elite foot guard. We have a fear-causing unit of scouts. Remember that whenever they fight, their opponents will be at a minus one of their morale checks. That's this mixed unit of lots of different kinds of undead. Mummies, wraiths, you know, ghasts. We have two units of light foot and then one, two, three units of undead. Really cheap to put this together, really easy to paint. Undead are just fantastic. You gotta love them. Now, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. We're doing just the straight up battle, the gory bloodbath on the plains of doom. But because the summoner always has to choose between moving and summoning, gets to be a little bit wonky. In order to make this a little more interesting, I have placed one, two, three, four, and there's actually two others you can't see. These are spawn points. If our necromancer is within three inches of one of these spawn points, he can summon any unit he wants at a plus one on the spawn point. Alternatively, on his turn, instead of moving, if he decides to summon a, a troop, he can summon them at a random location. We'll roll one, two, three, four, five, six. So he doesn't know where they're coming from, but he will automatically summon them. So that gives him a little bit more tactical interest. Um, so that little boost to the fact that we're dealing with 23 AP, not such a big deal. As far as terrain is concerned, I've got some tall grass for rough going. I've got a large dinosaur skull that blocks a line of sight and movement. And I've got a, another saber tooth skull that blocks. It's rough going if you're underneath it. It does block line of sight through it. Treat it like you would a woods. Now, the Bromans will start over on the eastern side of the board. We have a unit of light missiles, elite foot, heavy riders. There's not enough room. I have a second unit of heavy riders that will have to come on on a successful move check. And then we've got two units of light foot up there. Very simple, very easy. 24 points. The general here, as always, for those of you that haven't seen before, one of my figures came with a bit of a miscast. He's missing a leg. So this is uh, General Gimpy. Or is it, what do we call him? General, General Peg? I can't remember what it was. Um, at any rate, that's our general, you can tell. And all of these miniatures are from Curasan miniatures. I went with the barrel helms on all these guys. These guys are actual personalities and leaders. Uh, you can get kings and whatnot. Um, and I like the barrel helms on these guys. Uh, I didn't like the fragile lances that they had, so I went ahead and replaced it with, with wire. Easy peasy. That lemon you squeezy. And here's the little chatterbox you hear in the background. This is Rain. Rain is a green wing macaw. Uh, and unfortunately, she is a bit of a rescue bird. She is blind as a bat. She takes a little bit more extra care than most parrots do, but she is generally very friendly. So in addition to the backyard chickens, if you hear somebody uh, uh, chattering in the background, it's probably this little cutie. Hey, Rain. Let me just do a quick rundown on our units. We're going to have our light... Our Light bow down here for the Bromans, elite foot, heavy foot, heavy riders, and our two units of light foot right there. I do not have room to squeeze in the second unit of heavy riders, so it's just not going to happen. On the undead side, we've got our scouts down here in the south, our general right here in the middle, and then one unit of light foot up in the top. Uh, we have two more units of zombies and one more unit of light foot that are going to be summoned. We have to figure out who the attacker is. The red die will be for the Bromans. The black die will be for the black-hearted undead. The undead are the attackers. We need to figure out our leader abilities. Rolling 3d6 for King Hopper. We get a total of 12. Goder. Once each turn, a unit within 6 inches may automatically pass a move test. So he gets one free move within 6 inches. Over here, our summoner is going to roll an 11. You may re-roll once a failed move, attack, or shoot within 6 inches of your leader's model. All right, now here's a question. Does that include the leader's model himself? He's within six inches of himself. I'm going to say that it does. Now that we know what our summoner's special ability is, I'm going to redeploy these light foot to within six inches of him. That's going to allow him to take advantage of his ability. In fact, he's going to order them to move up. And on a six, they will. Then our summoner is going to move up as well. 
and on an eight he will and these are scouts down here now they are undead and they cause fear and on a seven they will they're also fleet of foot so i'm going to move them up the four inches into this patch of tall grass right here this uh is rough going but it is not block line of sight over here on the broman side of the equation we're going to take advantage of our free move action by saying hey you elite foot why don't you go ahead and get stuck in then we're going to try to bring our general up now, um, one thing I should point out is that the summoner can only summon troops that are, uh, they have to be further than, I think it's three inches away from the nearest enemy. So by bringing our general up to here, we've sealed off this spawn point. We're going to have to, like, spawn, we're going to have to camp it so to make sure that it doesn't, doesn't, you know, that he doesn't summon somebody in our backfield later on, but... Uh, at least, let me bring these guys over here, but at least, uh, at least he's out of the way. Now we're going to try to bring these guys activate on a five, just moving up on a five, and then the other unit is also going to move up on a five, so they'll both move up four inches, and then our bowmen are going to move up to here on a, and they're not, that's going to be the end of the turn. Now that our necromancer has gotten off the line, if he does get contacted, he's got a little bit of room to retreat, let's go ahead and take the automatic summoning. Now bear in mind, we're going to designate one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're going to bring on a unit of light foot. Well, first, and it's going to be automatic success, but we're going to roll. And on a four, because that spawn point is blocked, that's going to be the end of the turn. Since that's the case, let's go ahead and move these guys up first. On a five, they will move up four inches. These are scouts. They are fleet of foot. They uh, don't much mind walking through rough going now we're going to take our action to summon and on a four that's going to be the end of the turn we had a one in six chance and he still blew it we're going to use our free activation to move these elite foot up to here and because we don't want to be uh stuck we want some backup we're going to nominate these guys and bring them on and with a result of a seven Heavy Riders activate on a 6. They are going to be able to move on a full 5 inches. Well, actually, they're only going to move 4 inches because you've got that inch and a half of, of space. But we brought everybody on the field. Feeling good about that. We're going to nominate our archers to move on a 6 up. They are going to move up, and they only move a paltry... Is it? Let me check my roster. I have a wonderful... I found this on Lead Adventure Forum. It's got everything you need. Uh... Well, not everything. It eliminates a little bit of proprietary information just so that you have to actually buy the game. You can't play it off of this cheat sheet. But it does provide me with the opportunity to look up light bows. They move on a six, and they only move three inches. Okay, three inches it is. We'll bring them up to here. You know, I brought, I, I dumped them here thinking that this, this tall grassland would be an effective break for them. But the guys that are coming after them are scouts who don't care and those scouts are fearsome as well. If they do make contact, then you are at minus one on your courage checks. So we move these guys, these guys. We're going to nominate our two walls of spears. These guys first are going to move up four inches. The other guys are going to move up four inches. And then we can go ahead and tip of the spear. Our boss man is going to move up eight. So everybody's going to move up. And I should point out, we've got basically like two attack columns. Because again, we need to worry about that inch and a half spacing. Although our dice told us the summoner is the attacker, it's not quite the case, is it? Uh, these guys have the initiative, and they're going to be racing to contact these guys. The um, summoner's forces are largely defensive in nature. He's going to open up his turn by trying to summon. Now, remember, he can summon within three inches of himself, but he's got a spawn point here. So if he summons at this spawn point, he can do that on a five up instead of a six up. And with the result of a six, he is going to bring on this unit of light foot. And hopefully next turn, they will be able to form wall of spears to meet the charge of these heavy riders. Now, this big skull here blocks line of sight, blocks movement. So he's got that going for him. And then we're going to go ahead and form wall of spears with these guys. On a 12, they'll do that. And so we'll just kind of button them up, make two ranks. And now, um, basically, they can just stand there. You can't move when you're in Wall of Spear, but it does give them armor of three. 
And then the last unit can go is these guys, and we're going to bring them up this way. On a five, do they activate? I think they only activate on a... Do they move on a five? Scouts, moving on a five. Yeah, so four inches for them. And we'll bring them up to where the action is. So they're going to come across this way. And that's going to be it for the summoner. King Hopper is no longer within six inches of the elite foot. They're going to have to dice for it. We're going to use our free movement there. We're going to use our first attempted movement, these guys on a six. Both units of spears are going to move up four inches. Then we're going to move this guy up, activating on a five. He will, and since, since I'm right here, we're just going to measure, and we're going to bring them up like so. Boom, boom. You know, I'm going to fade this guy back a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and... Oh, you know what? Let's, let's cheat him over this way. Like three inches is like there, because that way, maybe what we want to do here... Uh, heavy riders are going to move on... What is it, a six for heavy riders? No, they're moving on a five, so let's bring them up. And on a five, who they just barely do it. They just barely do it. We can bring them up to here. And maybe we'll let them go first. Maybe we'll let them come. Or, ooh, yeah, we got to kind of bring them over this way a little bit because we got to maintain. Now, the nice thing is this ruler is just a little bit under an inch and a half. So those guys have moved up. I still need to actually physically move them. We're going to hold off on these heavy riders. No, we need to move up. We need to put pressure on those guys. They're going to move up five inches. Five inches will take them to about there and then our bowmen what do we do do we bring them into here they're only going to be able to move an inch and a half um let's just bring them up a little bit like every little bit counts on a six they can just barely squeeze in and then we'll kind of bring them up like that and it's not the full three inches but you know it buys them a little more retreat room puts them a little bit closer they have a total range of nine inches Okay, Mr. Necrometry, you got a free redo. These guys are going to form shield wall, and they do. So we're going to button them up nice and tight. Six across the front, six across the back. Two rows of spears. Good luck to those heavy riders. These spear boys are now going to have an armor of three. Now remember, they're undead, so they will take wounds on partial hits as well. We're going to try to bring these guys over to support. They're going to be able to move four inches. And that's going to put them here in the rough going. And what I like about that is, because of this narrow channel, we may be able to bring these drunken sailors. Come on, mummy, what, what, what have you been doing? It, it, oh boy, they just refuse to stand sometimes. Well, they're in there. I guess they're uh, taking cover. So we got shield wall, shield wall. These guys. Now, I think we want a little bit more protection for him. We're going to go ahead and summon a unit of zombies right here. On a 5-up, it's successful. We get a 10. That's going to do it. Our first unit of zombies is going to appear, again, you know, an inch and a half away from everybody. And they're going to appear a little something like this. Now, these guys only have an armor of 1, but because they're undead, it's going to buy a little bit of protection for our summoner. Nobody moved into contact. There is no melee. It kicks on over to the Bromans. It took some doing, but our... Which kings of Moe's Tavern finally stood up? We're going to use our free move action for these guys. It's not a free attack action. It's a free move action. They're going to come racing around, and we may have to get creative with our camera angles. Uh, because you're going to be boxed out by the dinosaur skull. Then what do we do? Do we go ahead and make the attack action with these guys, or do we want to bring these guys up first? Maybe bring these guys over? Provide them a little room. I'm bringing these guys up. They activate on a five. That's the end of the turn. Oh, here's why that's so devastating. These scouts are going to attack. Now, they only have an attack action of seven or better. But they got it. So they are going to be able to move into contact with these guys. These guys can counter charge. They're, the heavy riders do have counter charge. And counter charge... If they roll a 7 or greater, they can meet their charging opponent halfway. They got it. So we'll move these guys halfway up. Now the problem that the heavy riders have here is that they have now heavy ridden into rough terrain. Their attack profile is going to be hitting on 5s. Worse, their armor is 2. 
The scouts get to do the attack, and because they are on the attack, they are going to be hitting on fives. Wait a minute. Is that right? Are they hitting on sixes? Their attack value is sixes. They are... They, they're skirmishers. They're fleet of foot, evade hard target. Oh, you know what? They are not rangers. So they are going to be hitting on sixes. But... The armor for these heavy riders has gone from three to two. So every pair of sixes they get will do one wound. And they got a total of one pair. Hey, that's all right, because that means those guys have to make a morale check. And because our scouts cause fear, it's going to be at minus one. However, the heavy riders now get to counterattack. They're hitting on fives because they're in the heavy and these guys, the scouts, have uh, armor of two. Hitting on fives, they're going to get a total of one, two, three, four hits. So that's going to knock out two of these guys. And we got to do some morale checks. The king is here. He gets a plus one to his... But that's a minus one because of this guy. And it's a minus one because of them. So it's going to be a total of minus one... Heavy Riders do have a Courage of 4 up. So he needs to roll a 5 or better. He rolls a 9, and he does. The Scouts, on the other hand, are going to be at a total of... Wait! They're undead. They do not check morale. Ah! That is an important thing to remember. You wouldn't want to get halfway through a battle before you remember that. And because the Scouts are the ones that move to contact, they're going to have to back off that inch and a half. I know they're laying down. There's no laying down in uh, Dragon Rampant. Uh, so that is... Oh, and then you are also a casualty. That is going to be the... Is that the end of the turn? It's not. That was just the one attack action. The summoner still has plenty of opportunities. These guys now are going to try to move around this way. They need a seven. They get it. They are, what do hordes move at? They only move at three inches, so we'll bring them around this way. Ba -ba 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 Something like that. Th this last guy here, he can move three inches, and I think it's they're kind of hoarded up like that. Oh, you know, we got to bring them this way, because we got we to gotta maintain our distance there. And then it is time for him to go, and he's going to go ahead and move over here. On a four, he's not. They activate on a five. That's going to be the end of the turn. First order of business, King Hopper does not like fighting in there. He's going to back off. And on a seven, he is going to be able to retreat a full five inches to right about there. He's like, uh, no, that's not my job, fighting in conditions like that. I'm going to pull back. You guys, why don't you get stuck in? Why don't you do some damage? He is going to give the free move action. Is anybody within six? These guys are. They are not within attack distance. Well, I'm going to move them up uh, the, the four inches. They're going to be about two inches shy of hammering that shield wall. And then we're going to try to bring... Oh, boy. Should we bring those guys up? Let's bring these guys up next. We want to try to ride these guys down. And on a 10, they are going to be able to move the five inches up to here. And I think that's really about it for now. So we'll bring them up to about here. Five inches, um, uh, we're going to have to do it like this, because they're going to have to maintain the separation there. Uh, and then we'll bring these guys up over to here. They will move up, uh, and that'll give our riders a little more space, so we can move everybody up to three inches like so. And then our shooters, again, are going to be the last ones on a six. They do, and I think we want to... The more I look at this, I really think we need to bring these guys around like so. And just, they they're, they don't really have uh, a shot right now. Um, if we measure for each of these guys, it's going to wind up looking a little something like that. Um, they don't have a shot right now, but I think we need to kind of get them over here where they can start raining arrows through that cover. And then the last order of business will be, so we move these guys, these guys, these guys, and then we're going to move these guys and on a six, they will move up the four inches to support. We have a two-on-one fight here, but the the human, the blood pumpers, are going to be fighting against a skeleton shield wall. 
and that means they're gonna have an armor of three we're gonna have to use both of these units to try to drive them from the field uh, that is it for the Bromans no contact no fighting just yet we are gonna start with our oh, how close are we to them we're just within range we're gonna start with an attack action with these guys on these guys a five is gonna be a failure we get our redo because of our general a 12 will be a success do they want to counter charge? Yeah, I think they do. So once again, it's going to be very similar where these guys pile in. And unfortunately for the Knights, they are in rough going. We'll roll four. Now the Scouts are still at full strength. So they're going to roll their 12 dice. They are going to be hitting on sixes. And they're going to get one, two, three. So that's going to knock out one of these guys. They'll have to make a... Morale check at minus two. Oh, plus one for the leader is very close. So that's going to be at a total of minus one. They get a four. That is a... Is that a failure for heavy riders? Heavy riders have a courage of four. They just barely made it. Not only that, they do get to counterattack with their full 12 dice. And the scouts have an armor of two. Uh, rolling on the... Oh. Rolling on, so what was it? They, they're going to be hitting on fives. They get a total of three hits, and that does two wounds, does it? Yeah, they're, um, because they counterattack, their attack and defense is five. Actually, it doesn't really matter because they're in heavy going. But that is the horde, the scouts. That's going to be one death for these two, and then because they're undead, it's going to be a second death. So they need to make a, they're undead. They're not going to make any checks at all. Uh, in this case, once again, they're going to have to back off two inches because they were the attackers. That was only the first action. Now, our, our, our summoner is going to try to move, and he scores a nine, so that's going to allow him to kind of come up to here and have a little bit more space. And then our shield walls are still in place. We're going to try to move these guys into, well, is it three inches? They're too far away to attack, but they can at least move up. And they fail. That's going to be the end of the turn. These guys have move actions on a 6-up. They attack on a 7-up. These guys are out of charge range. I think we want to bring our heavy foot to, a, to drive towards these guys. Problem is they're in rough going. And they're only going to be able to move two and a half inches, but they are within two and a half. Well, this guy is just within two and a half inches. We'll give it to him. On the attack, they've got a six. And heavy riders attack on fives. This guy here is going to be able to move five inches like that. And we'll, we'll give that. And then so we've got one, we've got like one and a half guys in the rough terrain. Not quite enough. So it's going to be a fight in the open and it's going to be ugly because on the attack, those heavy riders will be hitting on uh, fours. And every hit is going to knock out a zombie. And let me just pull out the misses. That's a grand total of ten hits altogether. There will only be two zombies left behind. However, that's the beautiful thing about zombies. Those two guys aren't going anywhere until you ride them down. This unit is still on the table. And at least on this turn, the zombies get to attack back. They're going to be hitting on sixes. They need four of them. Oh, boy. And they're only going to get two. So the zombie... Hmm, they're only going to get two. But this is a failed attack. Our heavy riders have to pull back the two inches. They are still in rough going. Then, like, these guys are too far away. Um, we do have a shot here. They are only going to hit on sixes. Let's go ahead and see if they shoot on a 12. They'll be successful. They're going to roll all 12. It's beyond six inches. Is it within an additional three? So there's six. So there's six inches to there. And then there's, yeah, two more inches. So we're good. They're going to take the shot. Hitting on sixes. Every six is a kill. They get a total of one hit, and ah, uh, this zombie unit is still alive and kicking. 
Uh, our elite foot will move up to within an inch and a half. They activate on a seven, so they're going to pull up to here. Uh, and then our leader, he can issue a free move action to anybody. Uh, but these guys are out of line of sight, so he can't do it to anyone. Uh, let's move these guys first on a five up. A seven will do it. And then we're going to attack with this unit over here. And I'll have to show you what that looks like. The light foot are going to be attacking on... Uh, their attack action is actually on a six. That's going to be a failure. Fairly static over here with the shield walls standing firm. He's going to try to summon another unit of zombies right in here. And on an eight, he will do it. He's got one more in his pocket. But they just kind of show up anywhere within three inches. And I think they're an inch and a half away, inch and a half away. That's yeah, all good. So the question becomes, does it, what do we do with this half unit of scouts? What do we do with this unit of zombies? I think you bring the scouts over to attack these guys. You're only going to get to roll six dice, though. But you're hitting on fives. Let's start out by bringing this zombie. He's got an attack. The ravenous hordes. Well, is he within? He's not. Mm, oh. These guys are going to attack here. Ravenous hordes are successful in attacking on a 7-up. So they're going to pile in, and this is going to be a battle between units that are classed in rough going. That's the fun part about this. Uh, the zombies are going to roll first. Now, they only hit on sixes, but they only need to roll a pair of sixes to put down. It's that, that armor loss that kills here. So the zombies actually drag down one of the heavy riders. The heavy riders are at full strength. They're going to do one damage for every five and six they roll. And we'll re-roll those cock dice. That's going to be one, two, three, four all together. And the zombies just kind of melt away. But, sorry about that, as always... Oh, wait, there's an extra unit right there. Um, they did four. As always... You gotta kill all 12 of them. This zombie is gonna go ahead and try to attack these guys. And with a result of an 8, he does. Now, he's only gonna get to roll 6 dice, because he's at half strength. And he needs to roll... Man, elite foot. Good luck with this. He's gonna have to roll... Elite foot have an armor of 4. And you're only hitting on 6s. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. And those elite foot now are going to counterattack, and if they get a single, what are they, fighting on the defensive, elite foot, need a four up, if they get a single result of a four, and here's a four right there, that zombie is out. So now that is actually the first eliminated unit. We've got, the score is now one point to the Bromans, because they wiped out a ravenous horde, to no points for the summoner. It is still the summoner's turn. We can do what we want with these guys, and we might as well... Hmm, yeah, let's go ahead and charge. On a four, they're going to fail. But the, the, the summoner says, no, nah, try it again. You get a redo. And on a seven, they will be successful. They're only going to get to roll six dice, but they are hitting on fives. So if they can get a pair of... If they can get a five and a six, they'll do one more damage. They only got one. Man, that didn't work out so well, did it? Then the Heavy Riders are going to counterattack, and they're going to be hitting on fives, and there's going to be one dead and two dead, and that's the end. And that's actually a rather expensive unit. The uh, Scouts normally cost two points. Because they caused fear, they are worth five points. So the score is now six, two, zero. But as you can see, we still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not well, we got way more than six units. We gotta get down to four units before we're even close to the game being over. And I think that's it for our undead. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring these guys are they should be about five inches away. Yeah, just about. Uh we're going to order our free move. These guys are gonna circle around. Wait, do we get the free move with them? 
we do not. They are too far away. These guys get the free move. Not a free attack action, just a free move. So we're going to move up to here out of the rough going. Then we're going to roll to see if these elite foot can attack. They can. They are going to charge in to fight these zombies. They will be rolling 12 dice. They will be hitting on threes. And every one is going to be a kill. Two, four, six, eight. They completely wipe out this unit. The score is now seven. Man, like a scythe through wheat, aren't they? Those are some elite boys. But because they had eight figures, the zombies are going to get to counterattack. Looking for sixes, they get a grand total of uh, two of them. Which is not going to do any good. You need to get four of them. Mm. Mm, ravenous hordes. Sixes and sixes. They're not great. I think you got to stick them in the rough going. I think that's the only way you're going to get any effect out of them. Uh, then the only other thing we can do is we can actually summon one more ravenous horde. Uh, I probably should have nominated where. And I probably should have rolled. Because on a two, four... Or, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. On a two, four, or five, there's one last spawn point down here, but on a two or five, we could have had them showing up in some crazy places. As it is, they're going to have to be summoned within an inch and a half of these guys. We're going to dump them right there. And that'll be the end of the, the uh, of this guy's turn. Let's deal with this over here. i got to roll to see if they move or not. On a 12, they do. So this line... Little conga line can conga its way up along the border of the battlefield. And then, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking the smart play here. I'm going to move these guys over. We should be taking more advantage of these guys. They can move three inches. And maybe if these guys are in shield wall, that means, fine, you guys stay in shield wall. I'll bring my archers over and I'll just turn you into pincushion from a distance. If, if, if you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. These don't affect movement at all, our, our little spawn points. What have we done? Uh, these guys want to back off a little bit because they don't want to get sucked into here. We're going to back them off to there. And uh, likewise, we don't want these guys getting in, pulled in either. So we're going to move him back around here so he can support this fight. And on a 9, he does. We're just going to move him up to here, like so. And, and that way, he's, he's got line of sight to these guys. Mm, he's going to have to come around just a little bit more. There we go. And then he's got the 6 inches as well. So he can support this fight over here is going to be very critical. I think we're going to zoom in on that here in a minute. In fact, um, these elite boys... Are, what are we going to do? They're too far away. Let's bring them up to here. On a six they are. We're going to bring them up and we're going to chase this general off. Because if we can win this fight, I think we'll be in good shape. Now, it's or even if we can just do some serious damage to this guy. Uh, that's going to be it, I think. Oh no, we got one more. We got an attack action back here. And that's successful. So let's take Here a look. Here is the attacking unit. They are going to be hitting on fives. The skeletons that are in shield wall will be hitting on fours. And they have an armor of three compared to the armor of two for the Romans. We'll roll for the attackers first. Remember, they're hitting on fives. Every three of them will do a wound. We get a total of one, two, three. That's one wound. We get a second, a third... Uh, I should say a second wound. So between six... That's going to knock over two of the skeletons. Then the skeletons will counterattack, and they are going to be hitting on fours and doing a wound for every pair that they get. And that's a really bad roll for the, for the skeletons. They only get one successful attack. But, oh jeez, thanks for the snag there, guys. But the Bromans now do have to make a morale check. That morale check, because they're within six inches of the king, is going to be at even Stevens. And as light foot, they have a courage of four up. So we roll, and we get a four and a three. They're going to be fine. 
but they do need to slide back a little bit because they have been thrown back. Their attack was successfully defended. And they suffered just the one casualty. So remember, these skeletons are still in shield wall. And that's going to be it for the, that battle for this turn. These skeletons are not going to move on the next turn. They like their shield wall. That does, that does bring us to the end of the Broman turn. And our general is going to be happy to take up the gauntlet. But first... And that was such a rough go of things. Let's move these guys. Remember, they get uh, they activate a move on a six up, and they do get a do over. They're not going to need it this time. Uh, hordes are only going to be moving three inches. We're going to move them three inches up to here. So they are in rough going. I think their armor is reduced to two. Well, if it's reduced to two, that would be an improvement, wouldn't it? Um, that way, they can attack these guys next turn. And I think they may have more luck against the light shooters. Uh, then our general is going to get a 10, and that will bring us into an attack. Now, this is largely an even fight. The elite foot are going to be attacking on threes and defending on fours. Our general is going to roll 12 dice. He's looking for threes. He's going to get a total of, uh, and for every four, he's going to kill one guy. He gets a total of two hits. Two of these elites go down. Then the elites counterattack, and because they're fighting on the defensive, the Bromans are only going to be hitting on fours. And again, they need four of them if they're going to do any damage. So we got a total of one Hit for those, and then, ah, but remember we're fighting an undead unit, so that will also be two kills. You do get credit for the partials. Now, our big boy does not have to make, again, he's undead, they don't make a morale check. These guys are making a morale check at a total of minus two. With a result of four, minus two, a result of a two, means they are going to fall back and earn the red gem of shame. They fall back a half a move. That puts them to here. Or is it, it was, I think, on, is it route? Is it half a move? Or is it full move? Either way, they are going to have to rally on their next turn. Yep, half a move and battered. Got to recover. They do, but that's all they can do this turn. So that's actually an inch and a half. It's, it's a half a move when you are beaten that way. And then, these guys are gonna try to shoot. They get a total of three, that's a failure. Our general is gonna go ahead and charge these guys again. He likes the way that worked out. He moves into contact. He is rolling 12 dice, hitting on threes. He gets a total of one, two, there's one hit. And there is a second hit, so two more of these elites go down. They are at full strength this turn. They're going to roll, looking for fours, and they're going to get one kill for those, and then one kill for those. So once again, two more of these elite foot go down. They are at least reduced to half strength, but they don't have to make a morale check. Our Bromans have to make one at minus four, 6 minus 4 is 2. They are going to fall back yet again another inch and a half. And they are going to be battered. I think our, our general has to be happy with that. This is, well, might be a little bit overwhelming. Now we are going to bring our zombies. Oh. oh, yeah, they failed. That's what it was. Now we're going to charge our zombies into this light foot. And with a result of a six, do they attack on a six? What is their attack action? Are they within six inches? They are. How about that? Our hordes have an attack of seven. They need to roll a seven or better. So they got it that time. They're going to move into contact. And this is a new one for me. Uh, you know, I'm just going to move the six up. Because well, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Let's, let's see how it goes first, shall we? The... Uh, the light missiles have an armor of two. 
So we're gonna roll, looking for sixes. And every pair of sixes, we got one pair, we got a second pair, so two of these bowmen go down. The bowmen are going to defend as light bow, defend at fives. Oh, look at that, that's pretty good. So every five or better they roll, oh, I got one more here. They're gonna score a total of one, two hits. I, I gotta be honest with you, that's a little bit embarrassing, guys. Uh, the zombies don't check for morale, but they do fall back into the heavy going. You know, come to think of it, I they, maybe they should have, are they within a half, maybe, you know, they can only move a half an inch because they're in the heavy going. Eh, two inches, eh, we'll give it to them. We'll give it to them. We'll, we'll, bring, we'll bring them up. There we go. It's about an inch and a half. That's about an inch and a half. Um, two bowmen are gone. Our two zombies are also gone, but the bowmen do need to make a morale check at minus two. Eight minus two is six. Light bows have a courage of four. They're going to be just fine. Uh, and that's really what it, what it boils down to. We need these zombies to try to get them to score that negative hit. Um, that is it. We might need to bring these guys into the action, too. Hubla, hubla. Uh, where's our... In fact, he can... Let's do a move action and move them up here. Uh, on an 11, they're going to go. And they can move three inches like so. we got to draw these guys in. Maybe we can convince him to come over here and stop lending support to the spearmen over there. Uh, these guys are gone. These guys are gone. That's it for the Necromancer. It's time for the Bromans. These guys are at minus four. Seven minus four is three. They're going to fall back another move, and they're going to lose one strength point. Remain battered. What do we do? Uh, let's take a shot with these guys. A seven will do it. We're going to be rolling, and every five and a six is going to eliminate a zombie. We get a total of one zombie is shot down. I, I'm not even going to say it. I Who taught you guys how to shoot, huh? Who next? Do we bring these guys up to try and wipe him out? Or do we do this battle over here first? I think we bring him up, to be honest with you. And on a three, he's going to totally fail. Uh, so, the Necromancer now can redirect his efforts somewhere. Uh, where does he want to do? Let's move him over here. And on a nine, he can move three inches. We, we need to get away from those knights who are coming at us. Going to come over here, and then these guys are going to move on a five. Now they fail. We get one reroll for the General's ability. And now they can form Shield Wall again. Hey, buddy. You, you, you still chicken? And these zombies are going to attack up there. Now, we've already used our reroll, so that's going to be the end of the turn. Uh, remember, these, these skeletons are in shield wall as well. All right, fine. Um, we're going to use... Well, first we have to see if he recovers. Eight minus five is a three. He does not, which means they are eliminated. Courage of... Well, elite foot. Is there courage three? Oh, he does, actually. That, that could be big. He does pass his check. So we have that unit still on the table. We're going to protect him with these guys. If they're going to ride up on a five, they do not. That means the zombies are going to get a chance. Well, first we're going to move him up into the, the rough going. And that puts him within six inches. So these guys can make their attack action. They fail. They get the reroll. And this time they succeed. So I'm just going to move the one guy up. They are going to roll their 12 dice. Hordes hit on six. They need pairs of sixes. They only get one, but that is enough to force a morale check for those archers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and roll right now. Uh, they've lost two. They've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Do I have an extra? No, that's the zombie. They've got nine, so they're at minus three. And they pass with flying colors, and they get to counterattack. 
They're going to be hitting on fives. Every five and a six will kill a zombie. And they only get a pair. Okay, we'll take two zombies off. And then this zombie is going to fall back into here. And then that's going to be it for the summoner's turn. Shoot action. Needing a six. They fail. That means it's going to be the zombie's turn to charge them. They need a six. Is it six to attack? No, they need a seven. But they do have the reroll because of their leader. They get the eight. So they move into contact. Hitting on sixes. Just looking for pairs. And this time they're going to get a total of three hits against the bowmen. The bowmen are going to roll. And they're going to be hitting on fives. And every five or better. And I'm going to show you how bad these guys are. There's the roll that they've been looking for all this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is going to do it. This zombie is going to be completely wiped from the board for another point. However, our half-strength bowmen have to make a check. And with a result of zero, they are also going to be driven from the field. They don't just retreat. They're gone. And I think that's the first point that the Summoner has scored this entire game. Can't afford to get too cocky in this one. Because it usually comes right down to the wire. One of the reasons we're keeping this guy on the board, and we're going to try to keep him, in fact, on a result of a, um, result of a five, he was going to move over here, but that result is bad. Now, that being the case, we might as well try to hunt him down. And this guy is going to be able to move three inches. Oh, this could be dangerous. Um, three inches to there. And that's the only movement we've got. It's then going to kick over to these guys. He's going to run away. And with a six, he can. He's going to come over to here. we got to keep him alive. These guys are going to charge here. And on an eight, they will succeed. They are just about five inches away. And so that's going to be heavy riders rolling 12 dice. Heavy riders on the attack are going to be uh, rolling, hitting on fours, but they need a lot of them. Oh, not you. They get one, two, three, four, five, six, which is enough to kill both of these undead. However, those guys do get to roll six dice in retaliation. Let's just grab the bone white dice. That is a leader. That could be a real problem. So he, he served as bait, I guess. Uh, the leader does make his counterattack, and they are elites. They are going to be hitting on, what is this, four ups? Yeah, four. So one, two, three, four. They will do one more wound. These guys have to make a morale check at minus three. They are going to score a five. They're fine. Except that they are down to half strength. That is going to cause a morale check. Well, these guys never cause morale checks. Never mind. I guess it doesn't really make that big a difference. We now have to deal with two units of spear who are in shield wall. These guys are going to attack first. At least they're going to try. On an eight, they will be successful. So they're going to move into contact here. They're going to roll all 12 dice. They have taken very few casualties. They are going to be attacking, and as Lightfoot, they're attacking on a five up. They need to get three hits, one, two, and as you can see, that's going to be it. So they did one damage to the undead. The undead will counterattack. They are hitting on fours, and they only need to do... Um, what is that one over there? A two? Now they only need to, now hitting on fours, that's going to be one, two, three hits to the Broman Spearman. So there, that is now, the, let's see, we've got four, we've got nine. So these guys have to make a morale check at uh, minus three. And with a four minus three, they're going to fail. They're going to move back two inches and they will be battered. But, even with a plus one for having the general right there within line of sight, but 
These guys now have an opportunity to try to roll up into the show. And on a, I mean, they, they, they attack on a five, so whatever that is, it's going to be successful. So we'll bring one of these guys in just to show that that's what we're doing. They are going to roll six dice, and it's going to be the exact same procedure. Uh, the attackers are only going to be hitting on fives, and they need a total of, well, they get one, two, which will do one more death. But the skeleton spearmen still are going to be hitting on fours, and they're going to do one two, three hits to this unit right here. This unit then has to make a morale check at minus two, and they're going to score a three, and they are going to retreat, and they are also going to be battered. What a difference a shield wall makes, huh? We haven't seen this before. The skeletons still have seven guys left, and they have successfully fought off those two shield walls. Very impressive. Or I should say they fought off the light foot. They haven't fought off shield walls. Uh, then we can... Now, uh, you, you don't have to take my word for it. I'm, I'm actually going to bring... My other heavy riders are going to go one, two, three, four, five. They're going to come into play around like this. One, two, three, four, five. Something like that. They're kind of over here. Our We're going to maintain our, our last elite foot. And that's going to be the end of the turn. Now, we could bring our king in, but I don't like them odds. I want to soften them these skeletons up with these guys. Uh, in fact, the skeletons are going to stay in shield wall. They're not going to move. So it's really just down to what are the Bromans going to do. We need to check rallying here first and then here. Uh, these first guys with a five. That's two, four, six, eight, nine... That is a two. They fail. They are going to lose a guy, and they are going to fade back another two inches away from the skeletons with the failed rally check. Then the other unit is going to attempt to do the same. And with that terrible result, three, two, four, six, eight. Oh, wait a minute. This guy belongs over here. Two, four, six, eight. That's minus four. They are off the board entirely. All right, we're learning some valuable lessons about shield walls here, aren't we, guys? Um, heavy Riders, on the attack. On a five, is is that going to do it? Yeah, they attack on a five, so they go pow. Pow and pow. They are at half strength, so they only roll six dice, but because they charge, they are going to be hitting on fours this time. And they are going to get a total of five hits, which does two wounds to these skeletons, who are going to counterattack with a full 12 dice. And they are going to be hitting on light foot, hitting on fours. You guys get out of here. Um, they do need to do a total of four hits to do a single wound. But it looks like they're going to... And so they're only going to get one of those, which is okay, because... These guys are going to be at minus three. Minus four for the casualties, plus one for the king. Three minus three is six. They are going to be okay, but that does send them back a half a move to there. Then we are, I think we're done. I think that's all we want to do here. Uh, because on the next turn, they're going to stay in shield wall. Now remember, we've got one, two, three, four. Remember that elite foot that's, that's off screen. He counts as a unit. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six guys left. We still need to knock off two more units before this battle has an even chance of being over with. Um, we don't want to squander these guys yet. We're going to bring them in again. The attack action on a seven means they're going to roll their six dice. Even if it costs us the entire uh, this entire elite unit, I, I think we got to try to wipe out one of these guys. Uh, that is going to be a total of, uh, one, two, three hits. That's only going to eliminate one skeleton. The skeletons are going to roll, and they're going to be hitting on fours, but they need four of those to do any damage. So they got four, 
and they got three more, so that's just one. Rolling at minus four, seven minus four is three. Heavy Riders have a morale of four. He's going to fall back half a move. And he's going to kick himself for forgetting to try to rally these guys. Those guys roll a seven minus four is a three. They are not going to rally. They're going to fall back another two inches and remain battered. All right, that's fine. So that means we've got to bring him in. They're going to charge over here. Uh, on a, They're going to roll a nine for their activation. Are they within five inches? They're not. So they're only going to be able to move to here. And that's going to be the end of the turn then. So on the subsequent turn, we have to try to rally this guy who is battered. And with a minus five, that's going to be a four. Courage for heavy riders is four. So he is okay. These guys are at minus five. And they are now okay. Then our king is going to charge into here. And with a five and literally anything, they are going to be successful. So we'll, we'll bring what this is over. We don't need these anymore. He's just in the way. All right. So heavy riders on the attack, hitting on fours. They need every three hits. We'll knock out a skeleton. One, two, three. Uh, I'm sorry, it's one and two hits. So two more skeletons go hubba bye. The skeletons are now down to half strength, but they are going to be able to attack at full strength on this turn, hitting on fours. Every four of those. Heavy Riders have an armor of... Oh, I'm sorry. It's an armor of three. I might have been doing that wrong. Elites have armor of four. So every three will be a wound. One. That's just one. So we'll remove one knight. We'll fall back two and a half inches. And we'll make our check at minus one. We're fine. That's the end of the turn. We can... Bring these guys in again. On a nine, they're going to be successful. They are still at full strength. They're going to be hitting on five, fours. They're going to be hitting on fours. Every three of them will knock out a guy. They get one, two, three, and then two. So two more skeletons go down. The skeletons are at half strength now, and this is where the weight of the horses begins to tell. They only had six guys. They're only going to get um, one hit. They're not going to do any damage to these guys, but that will send them back. So that's going to be it. Do we want to bring him in? Yeah, let's charge. Might as well. Ba Bow. He's going to roll six dice and hitting on fours. Hitting on fours. He gets a total of one hit and a second one. He's going to take out two more of these skeletons. However, those skeletons are going to be rolling all of their dice. If they can get three hits, that'll be the end. And then we got to roll that one, too. Hitting on fours. One, two, three. That's the end of that unit. And how many units do we have on the board now? One, two, three, four. We still have five units on the board. Oh, it's getting tight, isn't it? Then we don't have anybody needed to rally, so these guys are going to go. On an eight, they are successful. So that brings them into contact. There you go, King Hopper. And he's going to roll, hitting on fours. He gets one kill and a second kill. So this skeleton unit is now down to just two guys. And what is worse for them, they only get to roll six dice. And those six dice are going to give them, well, at least it's going to give them one more kill. And the important thing about that is that it forces these guys to make a morale check at minus two. An eight is going to be successful, but they do fall back once again. Um, eight versus seven. Uh, it's now these guys. Well, let's use our free move. We're going to bring these guys around over to here. 
Which, oh no, look at that. These guys, these guys have decided we're done standing around. We're going to make an attack action. And largely that's just because it's getting so late in the day. Seven on seven. Uh, it's at, Oh, you know, that's actually a really bad idea for them, isn't it? Because they are now going to be hitting on fives on the attack versus the light foot, which are on four. Well, let's see what we got here. Um, I already did it. So they are hitting on fives. And they are going to get a total of one hit. The Bromans are going to be hitting on fours now. And they're going to get one, two, three, and a fourth hit. One, two, three, four. So we'll just pull those guys off. But the Bromans have to make a morale check at minus six. This is why you wanted to force the issue as the undead because they now have to make a morale check. And look at that. They are now gone. Uh, they're still in shield wall. We're going to maintain that. We want those couple of extra points. But we now are down to four. If we roll a five or a six, this is the last turn. All right. Last turn of the game. The Bromans are going to go, and they're going to charge in here. We want to mop up the floor with these guys. We are only going to be rolling six dice. We need all... Well, no, we just need four hits. Fours or better. They only get one. This unit survives. It is going to get to counterattack. And there's no way they wipe out that unit. Um, I think that's going to be one, two, three, four. Well, wait a minute. Maybe they do. Because now our king has to make a morale check. And he rolled high enough, so... At minus three and eight, they survive. That's the end of the game. We need to look at how many units were eliminated. Both of these guys had 24 points to play with. No, actually, come to think of it, the fact that we have six points left on the board means the Bromans wiped out 17 points. The Skeletons only came on with 23. So 17 points to the Bromans. The Undead... Killed everybody but these two units. And these two units are worth six for the elite foot, four for the heavy foot, or for the heavy riders, for a grand total of ten points. The Romans killed a total of 17 points worth of guys. The undead only killed 14 points. So that means victory goes to the Bromans. And they don't win in this game a whole lot. They have a very mixed force, very mixed record, but today was a very hard-fought battle, a long one. I want to congratulate those of you who stuck along for the ride. Um, we, we need to do some shorter videos, I think. This is starting to be kind of taxing. Ugh. But it's fun. It's a good kind of taxing. I ain't complaining, but I am praying for you.